Amen and amen and amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. My God, I pray that all is well with you. My God, and we're doing that which the Lord has called and he has asked us to do. Let me mute this so it does not play. I just want to bring this to our attention. My God, there is someone who is following us on our YouTube page has asked for us to pray, my God, for her two sons. She didn't leave the name initially, so I called back. I responded, excuse me, back to her, and I say, what are the names of your children that you want us to pray for? So I want us to, my God, write these names down, and we are going to pray for these two boys. She didn't say what the needs were, but my God, when we bring their name before the Lord, God knows who they are. God knows what they're in need of. And because the church pray, God is going to move. God is going to respond. God is going to get the glory out of this. These two boys, I am praying for salvation. I'm praying for restoration. I am praying for their faith. I am praying my God, that they would be reconnected with the Lord like never before. If it is that they have drifted and they've gone afar off from the Lord, my prayer for them, I'm looking for their names, my God. And while I'm looking, I am going to begin to pray. The songwriter says that we have come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his only word. He has never failed us Yet, my God, and the songwriter goes on to sing and say, ho, 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 ho. He has never failed me yet. And we just come before you, my God, tonight, God, and there is a request, my God, for the church to pray. There is a request, oh God, for the church to pray. God, and we are going to pray when the request comes to the church for the church to pray. pray. My God, we are responsible, my God, to take the cares and the concerns of the people. This is what God, the priest, did in the Old Testament. My God, his, his outfit or that which he wore was symbolic, my God, of what he was called to do. Ah, there were stones and there was weight, my God, that rest on his shoulder and his heart. And these were the cares and the concerns, my God, that, my God, he had to bring before you. The priest would go into the holies of holies, and my God, whatever the concerns of the people were, he would bring it, my God, and he would let it be known before God. He would wait. He would, ah, God, he would just sit there and he would just wait. He would bring their concerns, my God, before you. And when the church began to pray, God began to do things. When the church returned to that place, my God, that rightful place of prayer, my God, the world will come to us, my God, and ask that we pray. We pray, we pray. The songwriter says, we pray and God deliver. The age of the son, 29 and 31. So just bear with me. I'm scrolling and I'm praying. Uh, let me, let me, let me, let me let me pray first and then we'll find their name their ages 31 and 29 god and we just bring them before you my god a mother my god have concerns about her son this is not the first time we see in scripture my god we saw previously in the new testament a mother came to you and brought her two sons the sons of Dev zebedee and they stood before you lord and she asked the question my god can this son and that son sit on your right hand and your left hand and you look at her and you say mom it is not mine to give, but it is, my God, my heavenly Father's decision. Can they drink of the cup? Good God. This is the word that we have been praying about. Can they drink from the cup? The cup in scripture is symbolic of our faith, F-A-T-E. And Jesus asked the question, can they drink from this cup? The cup that I drink from, can they be baptized with the baptism 
that I'm baptized with. It is not for me to give, but if they ask my father, he knows if they can, and he's going to give unto them according to, my God, the measure of their faith. So to sit on the right, the aesthetics of it may look good, but my God, there are responsibility that comes with you sitting on my right and on my left, and we just come before you, my God, tonight, and whatever the needs of these two young men are. The mother knows, mother has a care and a concern. And God, she is desiring the best for her sons. And if it is that they're not there or they're missing the mark that mom desire for them, I pray tonight, God, in the name of Jesus, you know exactly where they are, even at this moment. But my God, because the songwriter says, we pray and God deliver, we're lifting them up before you, good God, and we're asking you to have, my God, an encounter with them tonight like never before. Why, God? Because when these boys was pregnant in their mother's womb, God, you spoke words to, ah, God, their mother, telling their mother what these boys will become. And maybe it is that they're not quite there yet. And this is the concern of the mother based on divine revelation imparted to her when she was pregnant with these boys and she is concerned. But tonight, God, I pray for her faith. My God, as she continues to walk with them, she has not given up on them, God, because I had she given up on them, she would have not, my God, asked a prayer. But we join her faith, and God, we're saying, whatever the hard cry is of this mom for these two young boys, we're asking you tonight, Father, in the name of Jesus, move among us. As the songwriter said, I'm going to move among you. I'm going to save among you. My God, I'm going to deliver among you. My God, I'm going to elevate among you. I'm going to do a new thing and let that new thing that you, my God, have declare and decree. Let it begin, my God, with these two boys. We just bring them before you tonight. My God, and we're asking you, Make the crooked straight, good God, in their lives. Turn, my God, that which the enemy meant for evil. Turn it around tonight, Father, for good. And let the mother see the telltale sign of the hand of God moving. Things, oh God, they used to do, let them do it no more. The taste and desire for the world and the things of this world. God, change their taste buds tonight. God, change their taste buds tonight. In fact, God, I'm writing their names as you have instructed us. Something that is of great concern, write it on a piece of paper, put it on the ground. Yes, God, and we're going to walk around it. And God, I'm putting these two young man's name on my God, that which I've added thus far. And God, I'm going to comply with the godly instruction that you have given unto us. Walk around in silent. Walk around in silent. Because there is coming, my God, the seventh day where you are going to give us instruction, my God, to open up our mouth, my God, and to shout and to praise and to worship you for what, my God, you are getting ready to do. As we walk around, my God, what seems impossible, you have revealed to me, good God, that is the shockwave of our feet, my God, that is breaking, it's having an impact on this wall that seems massive, but we don't know that, but it is our obedience to follow you. Because you tell us in your word, God, you will use the foolishness of this world to confound the wise. And so that, my God, which is in our life, that seems impossible, that seems difficult, that seems good, God, that we will never get a break. God, this is the moment that you have called us and you are saying the time has come for the church to exercise its faith. And so, God, you are giving us our own authentic experience. Yes, God, that which seems impossible. You want us to write it, put it on the ground, and walk around it. And as we walk in faith and obedience, the hand of God is in the background moving and fixing and bringing things my God, that is going to surprise you. Father, we just come before you. And everything, oh God, that 
we had to deal with today, my God, that is still unresolved. God, you want us to write that on the list of things. Why? Because you ask us the question, oh God, is there anything too hard for me? And the answer to that, God, it's no. But my God, you want us to test you. This is the season, my God, where you want us to try you and to test you and to see if you're not a man of your word. You are going to prove yourself to us, my God, so that our faith, can be activated for the faith that is on life support tonight. I pray, I declare and decree life in the name of Jesus. The faith that may have seemed to be flatlined, good God, we're going to shock that faith back to life. My God, and that heart, my God, that ah, was dying. Why? Because nothing seemed to happen. My God, you are going to reintroduce that heart to you so that heart can live. Job, my God, asked a question in Job 14, 7, 8, and 9. Rather, he made a declaration in that he said, There is hope for a tree, though it's cut down, though the roots thereof die in the ground. Yet through the scent of water, it is going to bud and it is going to bear. My God, and I dare say this to you tonight, get ready, get ready, get ready. Your leaves that were with her, by God, you are going to bring forth fruits. But you have to get to the place and the point, good God, where we as people of God begin, my God, to follow the instruction of the Lord. We have to follow the instruction of the Lord. It doesn't have to make sense to me for me, my God, to ah, move in the direction that God is calling me to move. If God speak to you, yes, we are obligated to move in the direction because if you begin to argue within your mind and said, I'm not obligated to do anything, I'm going to say to you, look at where you are right now. God spoke to you. You did not do anything about what God has asked you to do. And your circumstance, your condition has not changed. So look at what disobedience uh, I've handed to you. Heartache, pain, and misery. So when God speak a word to you, my God, we have to get to the place where we comply with God and do that which he's asking us to do because God knows best. Amen? God knows best. Last night as we prayed, my God, the Lord spoke to us and he said, my God, we're going to read about the story with Lot, my God, and his wife. The instruction was given to them to leave Sodom and Gomorrah. And we know the story. Lot, wife, she turned back and she became a pillar of salt. And as I begin to pray and as I begin to inquire of the Lord, he said to say this to the church. The reason it is challenging for us to for us to walk in faith is that we have adopted. And I'm going to use this phrase and it is very strong. This nonsense to fake it until we make it. <laughs> fake it until we make it. And what the world impressed upon us, we brought it into the church and we are faking it in the church, thinking that we're going to make it. But God cannot use anything that is not alive. Anything that is dead is buried. And we have been faking it for far too long. And when this becomes the pathology of our thinking, faking it until we make it, Every area of our life, we fake it, we fake it, we fake it, we fake it. And so when real, we have to interact with real because, my God, everything that we have interacted with was dead. It is the same approach and the same mindset that we have. God is saying to us, leave. Just like how he told Gideon when the question was asked and 20,000 left Gideon. God is taking things away from us in order to, my God, show us and demonstrate to us, my God, that we have faith. We're going to go, my God, to uh, the book of Genesis. Amen. We're going to the book of Genesis. We're going to the book of Genesis. We're going to the book of Genesis. We're going to the book of Genesis tonight. My God, we're going to the book of Genesis. We're going to the book of Genesis and my God, 
We're going to start, my God, at verse 19. Let's go to Genesis chapter number 18, and we're going to start at verse 19. And we have a lot of reading to do, because as we read through uh, the Word of God in prayer meeting, again, note this, if you will, when we read the Word of God, the Word of God reads us, and it tells you where you are. So all along you have been reading the word of God and because you're faking it until you're making it, you can't really identify with the scripture. Why? Because the life that you live, it's what we talked about yesterday. It is a form of godliness. And because it's a form of godliness, it's not real, it's not genuine, it's not authentic. So when God begins to speak to you, because you're living in and with this form of godliness, and when God begins to speak, it points to change, and you are not giving up what you have adopted in your life that you have benefited from. So you rather stay in and with the form of godliness, and my God, you think that you're doing good. But like the seven sons of Sceva, we're going to look at the seven sons of Sceva. These were seven men who lived in a town, saw Paul doing great things for the Lord, and they decide that they're going to fake it until they're making it. Paul was healing the sick, people that were demon-possessed, and they decide to go mess with a man that was demon-possessed. And when they decide to interfere with something to which they have no power because they're faking it until they're making it, my God, the demon jumped on them. And the demon says, Paul, I know because I've had some battles with him. Jesus, I know. But now the question is, who are you? Who are you? Lord, do you want me to go there tonight instead of, my God, the book of Genesis? Whatever it is you want tonight, Lord. Ah, whatever it is you want tonight, Jesus. I am getting out the way so you can have your way tonight. Have your way tonight. God, let us my God, look at the seven sons of Sceva. Good God. We're going to look at the seven sons of Sceva. Acts chapter number 19. Let's go to Acts chapter number 19. My God. This is what a prayer meeting look like. We come, God speak, and we move, and we make ourselves available, my God, to hear what he has to say. We'll look at, my God, the book of Genesis, my God, another time. I just feel led of the Lord to go to Acts chapter number 19, and we're going to start at verse 11 tonight, my God. Ah, because this is the issue. This is the issue. God has been speaking, my God, and we have conditioned our minds, my God, to fake it until, my God, we make it, and we're not making any forward progress and we are frustrated, and the world is coming to the church, but because the church, my God, is not at the place where we should be, we're not living in faith, we have not exercised our faith, we are faking it, we're faking it, and God cannot deal with, identify, do anything with anything that is fake. God is looking, my God, for us to be genuine, genuine in the book of ephesians i think it's ephesians chapter number five it says imitate me as i imitate christ so to imitate me means to have the discipline the dedication to read to pray and to fast and to spend time in the presence of the lord imitated me doesn't mean that you sit the way i do uh your 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 hand gesture or your uh your, your you move your body the way i do no it comes down to the discipline and the dedication me spending time with the lord this is what it's all about it is us carving out time and spending time with the lord so when paul says follow me as i follow christ in words deeds and action reading the word going before god experiencing godly conviction so we can turn from our wicked ways and serve him. The scripture says to you and I, watch this, that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. There is no fake. There is no substitute. Good God to a relationship with God. There is none. It's either you're for him or you are not with him. There is none. So my prayer tonight, good God, I'm going to pray for this tonight, is that we will expunge this out of our minds, because when we live, my God, with a, in and with a form of godliness, 
and opportunities are presented for the church, my God, to minister to the world, and the world comes to the church. The world walks away thinking, I thought they, but I heard, but I should, and, and the church is not at the place where we need to be. Acts chapter number 19. Acts chapter number 19. Uh, I'm going I'm to start reading at one. Is that okay? Acts chapter number 19. And we'll start at one for context. And it reads thus, and it happened while Apollos was at Corinth, that Paul was passing through the upper regions who came to Ephesus and find some disciples there. And he said, sorry, he said to them, oh I thank you tonight, Lord. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Because this is what time with the Lord will do. And when we come into his presence, we have to be flexible enough to change the agenda, to do what he's asking us to do. You see, when we fake it until we make it, we come with an agenda. But the question is, is that what God requires for his church? We came with the intention to read Genesis chapter number 18 and 19. In my time of prayer today, he just keeps uh, impressing upon my heart, faking it until you make it. And, 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 and I was in this place where I'm saying, God, how does that align with this? But we came and we pray and God is now moving us, my God, and he's going to give us context and clarity as to why, my God, we need to stop. I'm going to read verse one again. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that my God, Paul, having passed through the upper region, came to Ephesus, my God, and find some disciples. And he said to them, watch, watch what he said to them. Did you receive the Holy Spirit? <laughs> believe. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? So these are disciples, my God that are living and they are representing Christ. Second Corinthians 2 and 3, it says, Ye, that is you and I, are the living epistles known and read of all men. Paul goes to Ephesus and look at Paul's question again in verse 2 of Acts chapter number 19. He said unto them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? Watch the answer of the church. So they said, we have not so much heard whether there's a Holy Spirit. It's enough for me to stop there and just throw my hands up and ask the question. So if it's not the Holy Spirit who was leading, guiding, and directing the church, so this church where these are disciples, they're living like us today, faking it until they make it. Because again, James 4 and 17, to him that know it to do right and do it, it not to him, it's a sin. How do I know what to do which is right and what to do which is wrong? It's the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you and me. The Bible further goes on to say that when the spirit of truth is come, he is going to lead you and me into all truth. So if it's not the Holy Spirit leading this church, then my God, the doctrine and everything that they put forward, what was that who my God instituted, implemented, and came up, my God, with the guideline for them to walk? Were they really walking in faith? Were they? We don't know because the question is asked. When you became saved, <laughs> Have you received the Holy Spirit? And the church finds themselves in a quandary where they're looking up at Paul and go, we don't, but who, what, what is the Holy Spirit? Who is, but uh, we never heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So if it's not the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside, that is leading and guiding and directing and instructing and correcting, the scripture says that all scripture are given by God for the inspiration. It is good for doctrine. It is good for reproach, correction, and it is good, my God, 
for us to read it, experience godly conviction, and turn from our wicked ways. So again, if it's not the Holy Spirit that was the head of the church, my God, then who, what, when, how, where, and why? And chances are, we don't know, maybe the seven sons of Sceva, they went to this church and they saw that which was set in motion, they adopted it, and they begin to live that way. Do you see how the church can negatively impact the world around them? Verse 3, and he said to them, my God, into what then, my God, were you baptized? So, my God, they said, into John's baptism. And Paul said unto them, indeed, John baptized with a baptism, my God, of repentance, saying to the people that, my God, they should believe on him. Who will, my God, come after him? That is on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm not talking about baptism tonight. That's not what we're after. Verse 6, when Paul, my God, had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, watch this, and they spake with tongues and they prophesied. So they were faking it until they make it. Living in and with a form of godliness, the gospel is preached, repentance is experienced, and they got for the first time an infilling of the Holy Spirit. No! No! They can begin to live by faith. Because before, it was their feelings, my God, that they set in motion and dictated and determined what comes next. Because if it felt good to them, my God, they're going to do it. But when the gospel was preached, commanding them to love thine enemy, do good to them that despitefully use you and say all manner of evil against you, that does not go down well if the Holy Spirit is not there and we experience godly conviction and God says to you, that's what I want and that's what I demand and that's what I'm asking of without the Holy Spirit to reinforce that which God demands of his church, my God, they were serving the Lord based on their feelings. And now Paul comes and he lay hands on them, and they receive the Holy Spirit. They got what they need now to live out a, my God, fulfilled Christian life. Watch this. No, the men were about in 12 in all. Verse 8. And it says, and he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly, my God, for three months. So he's there for three months preaching, reasoning, my God, and persuading concerning, my God, the things of the kingdom of God. But when some, my God, <laughs> were hardened and did not believe, but spake evil of the way. You see, the way is the term that they used back then for Christianity. So they would use the expression, I am of the way. So they spoke evil of the way before the multitude. He departed from them. And my God, withdrew the disciples reasoning daily, my God, uh, in the school of Tyrannus. And this continued for two years. So, my God, that all who dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord, both the Jews and the Greeks. And because Paul was not faking it, Paul, my God, was moving under the unction of the Holy Spirit, filled with the presence of God, and he go and he did that which God is asking him to do. Watch the text in 11. Now, God worked on using miracles by the hand of Paul. So that, my God, even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, my God, and the disease left them, my God, and the evil spirit went out of them. And we see in today's day and age, some preacher have the audacity to, my God, ah, <laughs> said that, my God, what Paul did, they are doing this. Paul did this, and Paul did not stand there and declare, here is my handkerchief, my God, this is going to heal you. 
God's spirit was upon him and even everything that he touched and he would just simply give it to them. And when they took it home, my God, they experienced healing. So it was not said in the scripture that Paul, my God, stood up and gave this and say, go home and do this. No. But we read the scripture and what it says in the book of St. Matthew, he do err, E-R-R, not understanding the scripture. So we read it and we apply our own interpretation to it. But I want to say this to every child of God tonight, that when we read it and we are applying our own interpretation, we experience godly conviction because God is going to confirm his word and say, yes, that's what my word means. But when we set in motion what we think, feel, and believe, we do things and we do more damage in the body of Christ than we do good. Verse 13. Then some of the itinerant Jews, as some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call, my God, the name of the Lord Jesus over who had evil spirits, saying, my God, we, uh, exorc we, ex we, 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 we exercise you by Jesus and by Paul and by Paul whom he preaches. Also, so they saw Paul doing what he was doing under, my God, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Paul submitted his life to the Lord and gave his life over to the Lord and said, God, take full control of my life and work through the gray areas in my life because you have given me a vision of what my tomorrow looks like. And God, first thing I'm asking you to do is to deliver me from me. Deliver me from me so I don't get into the way. When you read Romans chapter number seven, Paul speaks about the struggle, my God, and how difficult it was for him at time. I'm going to get back to my text. Just bear with me for one moment. Paul said, my God, in Romans chapter number seven, the thing that I want to do, I do not. And that which I do not want to do, that I do. Oh, wretched man that I am, who can rescue me from me? So Paul is letting us know that it was not peaches and cream when he got saved. He had to struggle, but he struggled in the presence of the Lord, my God, for God to fix it. So much so that, my God, the Bible talks about the thorn that Paul had in his flesh. And my God, the Bible said that he prayed constantly to the Lord and say, God, take the thorn out of my flesh. And God's response to him was simply this. My grace is made sufficient for you. I am made perfect in your weakness. So Paul had the opportunity to fake it until he make it, but he understand that God does not work with anything that is fake. God is looking for people who are authentic in their worship and their relationship with him. So these Jews, they saw what he was doing and watch this now in 14. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish priest, who did so, and the evil spirit answered, watch this, and said, Jesus, I know. And I'm just going to fill in the blanks here. I know Jesus because we were sent to go fight against Jesus. And he whooped us there. He whooped us there. He, you know what? Even when, <laughs> Jesus, we know. Because we have the scars of the whooping that he gave us. And this is the evil spirit speaking to them. And Paul, I know. But watch the text. This is the evil spirit having a conversation with these seven individuals who are faking it until they make it. Let me read this again for you, because I want you to know that this is the word of God and this is what God is after. And also, verse 14, there were seven sons of Sceva, Jewish priests, who also did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know. But watch the question, who are you? You are faking it until you make it, and there is nothing about you that represents or resembles Christ. It gets good. Verse 15. But who are you? Verse 16, rather. Then the man in whom the, the evil spirit was leapt on them, 
overpower them and prevail against them, my God, so that they fled, my God, out of that house, naked and wounded. This became both, this became known both to the Jews and the Greeks dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell on all of them, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many who had believed, my God, confessing, my God, and many who had believed came confessing, my God, and telling their deeds. Also, many of those who were practicing, watch this magic, brought, my God, their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted, my God, of the value of them, my God, and a total 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. When these things, my God, were accomplished, Paul purpose in the spirit, my God, when he had passed through Macedonia and Acacia to go to Jerusalem, saying, after my God, I have been there, I must see Rome. So he went to Macedonia Two of those, my God, who ministered to him, Timothy, my God, and Erastus. But, my God, he himself stayed in Asia for a while. <clears throat> the time has come for the church, those who are called by his name, to stop. 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 Because when we fake it, my God, like we are making it, and request comes to the church for the church to pray and to move and to operate and to function under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We are not there, and we don't have what it takes to set people free. Think about this again. Paul goes, found these disciples. And when Paul looked in the spirit, he saw some things that was of concern and the Holy Spirit revealed unto him. Ask them the question, have you so much received the Holy Spirit since you believe? Watch the word of God. And they said, we have not so much heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Ah. So if you do not know the Holy Spirit and you are faking it, you're not living an authentic, you're not authentically representing Christ. Look at the downstream effect. Look at how them faking it until they they think that they're going to make it. Look at how it affected the community that they were in. And look at the difference when we stand up, my God, and walk in faith and operate in faith. The Bible said that, my God, when Paul stood up and preached the gospel, there were people who were doing witchcraft and sorcery, and there were people who were in black magic and doing just about everything. They brought their books, my God, with their uh, formulas or whatever you spells or whatever it is they had, and they burned it. And the Bible tells us, my God, the equivalent was 50,000, my God, pieces of gold. Look at it. All because one man decided that he is going to remain faithful and he's going to remain constant in his walk. And he goes into a place, my God, that is overrun, overrun with my God, misrepresentation of the gospel. And the first thing, my God, the Bible is so correct in that the Bible said that judgment must begin in the house of the Lord. So Paul goes to the church, and when he goes to the church, he realized, good God, that the church is functioning, living, and operating in and with a form of godliness and paul stood up my god maybe it was a thursday night like now he stood up and he asked the question have you believe have you received the holy spirit since you believe yeah. 
the elders and everybody in the church. But what is the Holy Spirit? What is that? Who is the Holy Spirit? And Paul took a step back and go, okay, we can fix this. And we're going to fix it by talking about what you're currently doing. And it's a misrepresentation of Christ. And then, because you see, in order, God, I thank you tonight. In order for healing to take place, Paul is not after the symptoms, but Paul, my God, is after the chronic issue, the root of the matter. You do not have inside of you God's spirit. And so we are going to correct the mind. And when we correct the mind, the heart will have, my God, the capacity to receive. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And Paul fixed the issue at hand. The church of the living God should never, never adopt the ways of the world in that we're faking it until we're making it. It's not. And even in the real world where you are, you should never entertain this nonsense about faking it until you make it because opportunities will present itself and people good god will come to you and because you are misrepresenting what my god you said you are people come and their lives are not changed their lives are not positively impacted because you tell them that you are this and when they come they find out that you are that Paul stands up, he fixed the church, he prays for the church, he brings them into a time of prayer, fasting, and repentance. And when they did, Paul lay hands, my God, on these men, and the Holy Spirit came upon them. They experienced an infilling of the Holy Spirit. They were now indwelled with the Holy Spirit, empowered to go and to do the work that God has called them to do. The Bible said that they speak with new tongues and they prophesy. And that did not stop there. But now these men, they go out and the issue, my God, the stronghold of witchcraft that was in this area, Paul had to first break it over the church. When you look at this word, my God, Galatians chapter number three, this is the second church that Paul had to go and to break this off. When you read Galatians chapter number three and one, Paul established a church in Galatia. He left for a while and he come back and the church fall into the state of apostasy whereby God, it was no longer the spirit of almighty God that is leading the church. And when Paul come back and saw the deplorable state of the church, Paul says to the church, oh, foolish Galatian, who has bewitched you? That word bewitched means who has cast a spell over you? And Paul goes on talking to the church. You started to do good. The hand of God, the spirit of almighty God, worked and did great uh, miracles in your hand, but somebody comes along and convince you to forfeit, to give up, and to stop that. And this, my God, is where this church was. A spell. And Paul first broke the spell over the church. And because the spell was broken over the church, my God, the community, my God, which have been negatively impacted. So what started in the church, my God, you think about a stone that you throw in upon and the waves begin to propagate all the way out. So the, the, the spell is lifted and broken. The church is living in a with a form of godliness, faking it until you make it. God sent Paul to deal with the issue and the issue in the church, my God, made its way outside and people and everybody was now delivered. No longer will we live as a cheap copy of a great original. We're going to pray. Father, we just come before you tonight. We come before you tonight. God, the songwriter says, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All that I've needed, O oh God, thy hands have provided. Great, O oh God. 
is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. We come before you tonight. And God, you want us to be honest with you. You want us to be honest with you. And maybe for some tonight, God, this is the first time, good God, that we're going to be honest with you. Ah, it is said that we ought to be true to ourselves and false to no man. I'll say that again for somebody. Be true to yourself and false to no man. So God, if I lie to me, I'm going to lie to you. If I lie to me, God, I'm going to lie to you. And I'm going to lie to the people, my God, who are around me. Because God, I'm living in and with a form of godliness. And not until God, something that is genuine and authentic comes, everything that I've done, people who are walking in darkness, because I present myself well in that I'm faking it until I make it. God, I can speak the word. I can do the things that look godly. I can, my God, present myself, my God. I can wear the clothes. I can hear the language. God, we see so many different times where this is the reality. Persons are not true to themselves, and they're false to everyone. They present themselves to be something that they're not. And because we, your people, are so gullible at times, what is asked of us in the book of John, not St. John, but John 1, 2, and 3. You tell us, oh God, that we should try the Spirit. We should test the Spirit and see if it is of God. And if it's not of God, we do not align with it. And so this is what Paul did. Paul came to the church and he tested the Spirit. And Paul realized that this church is not genuine, it's not authentic, it's not being real. God is not the head of this church. And Paul decided to ask the question, have you received the Holy Spirit since you got saved? And watch the word in Acts chapter number 19. This is the church responded. We have not so much heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? What is the Holy Spirit? What are you talking about? Then church, if it's not the Holy Spirit who is leading, guiding, and the head of your life, then who are what? Do we live out this Christian life based on what I feel, because know and understand this about your feelings and mine. They have betrayed you. They are going to betray you, and they will betray you. And these are feelings that we handpick to set in motion when decisions are needed and warranted in our lives. And Paul confronted the church, faking it until they make it. Faking it rather, thinking that they're going to make it. Living in and with a form of godliness. And the community outside of the church is dying. And what we saw in the church, we also saw it, good God, in the communities. Because the seven sons of Sceva, my God, was in the same condition as the church. They did not have the Holy Spirit. They saw it and they thought, my God, I can imitate and I can do this and I can go through the theatrics, my God, of presenting this and shouting and jumping and skipping and hopping and my God, come up with a formula, my God. God, and you're not formulate God in that. Ah, you will speak and you will do different things. What you did, my God, yesterday, you will accomplish the same goal, my God. Your methods, my God, will change. The methods, you will choose different ways 
to communicate your mind. But when we're faking it until we're making it, we have adopted, my God, these rules and these regulations and these guidelines. And for those who do not know better, they come and they ooh and they are, ah, and they walk away thinking that I've had an experience with the Lord, and they have not. They come thinking that, my God, they have experienced healing, and they have not. And so Paul saw, my God, the importance of confronting the church because somebody has cast a spell on the church. And Paul confronted the church in love by asking one question. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? And the church was honest in that. He says, we do not know. We, what is the Holy Spirit? And Paul fixed the issue in the church. And now the issue is fixed in the church. Now we can go out into the world and fix it. The seven sons of Sceva, maybe they attended this church because the Bible said that their father was a priest. We don't know, but chances are. They have adopted, they went to this church and they have adopted, they modeled what they saw. And what they saw, they took it out into the streets, misrepresenting Christ, misleading people. And Paul realized the danger in this. And so he fixed the church and then he went out and fixed the world. My question to you tonight, church, it's simply this. Are you faking it, thinking that you're going to make it? Or are you authentic in your walk? Are you being truthful to you tonight? And that you say, God, I don't have this. God, these are missing. God, you're just honest and truthful with yourself. Because you see, the Bible says that a broken and a contrite heart, God will not despise. But when we, my God, take it upon ourselves to live a life that is not genuine and authentic, my God, then what happens to the seven sons of Sceva? They saw a man that was demon-possessed. And when they decide, my God, to approach the man that was demon-possessed, thinking that they're representing the church. The demons stop them and say, hey, let me say this to you. Jesus, I know, because we have had many a battles with him. And every time we fight him, he whoop us. That brother Paul, God is oozing out of him. So therefore, we don't even bother in fact, we, 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 we tried to take him on, but because he has so much of God inside of him, he whooped us again. So whenever we see him coming, ah, it's like somebody walking in a crowd and the crowd just part. That's what we do. We just get out of his way. But then the man that was demon possessed and the demon inside of them, look at these seven individuals. And the question was asked, who are you? Because when I look at you, I don't see anything remotely resembling God. And because you have the audacity to mess with me, I am now going to mess with you. And the Bible said that, my God, the man that was demon possessed, jumped on all seven of them, beat them, tore their clothes, my God, and brought them to shame. And for some of us tonight, living in and with a form of godliness, refusing, my God, to walk away from that, here is an opportunity, good God, for you to begin to walk in faith. Paul confronted the church. The church had to admit the error of their ways and walk away from that, repent in order to receive what God has for them. What if you, my God, looking at the life that you have been living, knowing that, my God, you have been faking it all along, what if you would but just be honest with yourself tonight? 
What if you would but just be honest with yourself tonight? And by you being honest with yourself tonight, you pray Psalm 51. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit in me. David, when he prayed Psalm 51, David said, God, against you and against you alone have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. And God, if you would do this for me, I promise you, my God, that I'm going to, ah, 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 I'm, ah, I'm taking a step of faith because God, I am empty. I'm shallow. There is no depth to who I am. Nothing that you give me, God, I can retain it because I've lived my life, my God, faking it. All I know how to interact with and I build a life, my God, and, 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 and my thought process, God, and everything about me, my God, is to interact with something that is fake. So God, when I get something that is genuine and authentic, I don't accept it. God, God, I refuse it because it points to change in my life and I don't want to change. I was never at the place, my God, because it takes a whole lot for me to be true to myself and my God, I don't want to do it. I'd rather live the way I've been living. But again, what we read yesterday, prayed about and talked about, if God were to send you to go speak to a group of individuals to turn and to come and to follow him, and if you choose not to and anything happen to those individuals, God is going to require their blood at your hand. So we've got to understand the magnitude and the weight of what rests on our shoulder and the responsibility that comes with being a child of God. God has tasked us with the responsibility to be truthful. God, the scripture says, is a spirit, and they that worship him, watch the text, must worship him in spirit and in truth. So if you have not been truthful on the inside, my God, you're living in and with a form of godliness. I feel like I just want to read Psalm 51 for somebody tonight who has been faking it until they think that they're going to make it. But I want to say this, there is no making it when you are faking it. Because God constantly create opportunities around you. And my God, because you are faking it, you can't engage it. You come up with all different type of excuses. And God is going to hold us accountable tonight. God is going to hold us accountable tonight. David in Psalm 51, it reads thus, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgression. Blot out what I did, God, and that have been faking it, thinking that I'm going to make it. I've lied to myself. David goes on and he said, wash me thoroughly from mine iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my God, my transgressions and my sins are always before me. Nothing happened as far as change until we acknowledge the error of our ways. Um, David now in four says against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. My God, that you should, my God, be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, and for some of us, this is the default. We blame our history, we blame our culture, we blame our mother, we blame our father. You are at the age where you're taking responsibility for yourself. David in five says, behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Watch the text in verse four, six. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts and in the hidden parts, my God, you will make me to know wisdom. So God desire truth in the inward part, in the heart. So you have to be true to yourself and false to no man. If you continue to live a lie, my God, you will never be become and do that which God is asking you to do. So David is taking responsibility all through. David now says in verse 7, purge me with hyssop 
and I shall be clean. Wash me thoroughly, wash me rather, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear, my God, joy and gladness that the bones that were broken may rejoice. Hide your face, my God, from my sins and blot out mine iniquities. Watch this. So David has taken responsibility for the error of his ways. David has asked the Lord to wash him, cleanse him. David says, God, yes, it is me. I am the one that have done this. But in 10, David now goes on. He said, create in me a clean heart and renew a steadfast spirit in me. Watch verse 11, because David understand the importance of God's spirit leading and is at the head of everything that we do. Watch what David is now asking. David said, do not cast me away from your presence. But watch the second part of 11. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Ah, restore to me the joy, my God, of your salvation and hold me by your generous spirit. Then, after we repent and we do right, watch what David says. David is now saying, then I will teach transgressors your way. So who has erred and done wrong like I did? David said, because I've repented and you have restored me and they know the error of my way. David said, I will now take the life, the restore life, my God. And I will go out there to the public because they know me when I was living in sin and living in and with a form of godliness. They know when I was faking it and God, because you have restored me, I can now go to the world and said, you know my story, but this is who I am. I am a change man. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. All things are passed away. I'm born again, more than a conqueror. That's who I am. David in 13 says, I will teach transgressors your way and sinners, my God, shall be converted to you. Deliver me from my God, the guilt of bloodshed. O God, the Lord of my salvation and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall my God show forth your praise. Watch this, for you desire not a sacrifice, or else I would give it. You delight not in burnt offering because I would give it. The sacrifice of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. These, my God, O oh God, will not despise. Do good in your pleasure, my God, to Zion. Build the walls, my God, of Jerusalem. Then, my God, shall, then you shall be pleased, my God, with the sacrifice of righteousness, with burnt offering, the whole burnt offering. Then they shall offer bulls upon the altar. Father, forgive us. Forgive us. And maybe this is our Jericho wall that we have been battling in silence. Every time you speak and you demand and you ask something of us that require us, my God, be truthful, be authentic, because we are faking it. We come up with all different type of excuse. And the reason why I hear you saying, God, that we have avoided, my God, the spotlight is because who we are not would be presented to the world. And we realize that the world will know that we're not true and genuine. So when our names are called to do things, we come up with all different type of excuses. Not to do it and not to be a part of it. But you're calling us into repentance tonight. You're calling us into repentance. And I hear you saying, oh God, that who the Son set free is free indeed. And tonight can be your night where you are delivered from you. And because you are delivered from you, you don't have to live in and with a form of godliness anymore. Faking it. God has called you to be true to yourself. And the reason why, my God, you are so frustrated is God continue to speak and everything that he speak to you, you ignore it, you forfeit it, and you walk away from it. And we even get to the place and the point. My God, 
No wonder the Lord prayed last night and pray for our ears and our hearts to be open. Out of St. Mark. I think it's 736 where he prayed and he spoke the word, El Father, be open. El Father, be open. We anointed our ears and our hearts and our minds last night. And today, this word, will take up root and residence in its rightful place because our hearts were good, God, I thank you. You opened our hearts yesterday so you can deposit this in our hearts so we can go and be all that you have called us to be. Father, we thank you for what you have done thus far. We look to you tonight, my God, and we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Gone are the days. We're children of God. Live faking it. It should not be a part of anything that we do as children of God. There is nothing fake about God, and there should be nothing fake about the church. God has called us to walk circumspectly before him. And if we are serious about the things of God, he will come and he will give us everything that we need. Not this form of godliness nonsense that causes, my God, everything, the community around the church. Look at the community around the church. I'll say this and I'll stop. Every church that God create and strategically place, he place it in a community where there is a stronghold. And God has equipped that church to break the stronghold that is outside. Just like how Paul went into this community and the stronghold of witchcraft, when Paul stood up under the anointing of the Holy Spirit and functioned under the unction of the Holy Spirit, he broke the stronghold, my God, which captivated the heart and the mind of the church. And that, my God, made its way into the community and the community was liberated and set free. I'm going to stop here too. God bless you. God bless you. Be true to yourself. And false to no man. I'm true to me because the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of me. And I experience godly conviction that tells me that that is wrong and that is right. That is wrong and that is right. That is wrong, and that is right. There is no gray area with God. It's either yes or no. It's either you are or you're not. The church in Acts chapter 19, they were not. And God had to fix it with Paul. Let Jesus fix it for you. I'm trying to stop you. He knows just what to do. Whenever you pray, let the Lord have his way and let Jesus fix it for you. He wants to turn your life around so you can go and turn the community, my God, that you're in around. But you don't do it faking it, thinking that you're going to make it. You're wasting your time and you're wasting the time of the people who God is going to send needs to be delivered. Because every time they come, they should experience the presence of God. But because you're faking it, they're not experiencing it. And you are robbing people of the opportunity to have an experience and an encounter with the Lord. I said I'm going to stop. God bless you.